you're with me at the center of a storm right now. Ten days. Ten days. Much love. Folks have woken up and recognized that they can't be bystanders, that there is a lot at stake. Okay. Now you got five minutes Hello. on this corner. How are you, sir? Do you know who he is? Is this Mr. Olson? This is about the soul of the country. Okay. Folks are standing up in a way that no one predicted to push things back in the right direction. I think the Democratic Party is at its worst point since Ulysses S. Grant. The number of Democrats in the House dropped from 256 to 187. They simply don't have any power. In a hotly contested special election to replace former Congressman Tom Price in Georgia, Republicans are scrambling to head off defeat. Hi, Marilyn. My name is Dan. I'm a volunteer for John Ossoff for Congress. Um, hi, my name is Lindsay, and I'm calling today on behalf of John Ossoff for Congress. April 18th, we've got the special election to replace Tom Price in the 6th District. Well, the 6th District is pretty much Atlanta's northern burbs. The last time a Democrat held the seat was in Jimmy Carter's era in the 1970s. This was, by all accounts, expected to be a very sleepy, Republican-only affair. John Ossoff has transformed the race. John Ossoff's campaign has gone from someone who people had barely heard of, even in Democratic circles, to someone who has raised $8.3 million, which is setting a, what we believe to be a record. Democrats do hope to make this the beginning of a Donald Trump resistance. They hope to, to deal Republicans an embarrassing blow. If Ossoff prevails, and that's a big if, then all bets are off for 2018. All right. A few of you have known me for a while. Some of you are just getting to know me. I was born and raised in Metro Atlanta. Grew up in the 6th Congressional District in North DeKalb County. So I worked on Capitol Hill for five years, specializing in defense and national security policy. And I saw the gridlock and the partisanship and the corruption, and I decided to leave. Since then, I've run a small business that produces investigations of crime and corruption for international television broadcasters. And I had no plans to get back into politics anytime soon, uh, until November. It wasn't the outcome that I expected, although I wasn't sure what was going to happen going into Election Day. Um, but immediately I felt that I needed to get re-engaged in a much more direct way than I had anticipated. The notion of America as an open and decent kind place where anyone can get ahead is at risk of abandonment. I will stand up for civil liberties and civil rights and voice my objection to scapegoating of vulnerable and marginalized people in our community. This is the first chance in the country to make a statement about what we stand for. It is an honor for all of us that Georgia is indeed the front line. about the recent reports claiming that you had top security clearance while you were a congressional aide or something? Uh, maybe... Those have been debunked really? by the Washington Post. Yeah, and I saw the Washington Post gave it one Pinocchio because you were exaggerating it or something. Republicans say that he's inflated his resume. He's 30 years old and he's, he's, he claims to have five years of experience as a national security aide to Hank Johnson, a backbench Democrat who has, done, who has little to his name. I think the most indelible attack ad here in the 6th District so far painted John Ossoff as this Han Solo character. I'm Han Solo, Captain of the Millennium Falcon. John Ossoff, not honest, not serious, not ready. Sorry, Johnny, but the truth strikes back. All due respect to John, because he's a nice guy. I've met him, I like him. I don't think he's got the experience you know, when I was 22, I was making photocopies. Twelve days, 24-7 operation. Gonna win this. I'm sure there's some very successful Democratic businessmen who said they chose to pick a kid who very little real-world experience. He spent a few year, years in Washington, D.C., uh, pretending he was on House of Cards. It's kind of confusing that they couldn't find a better candidate. He's pretty much been 
selected by the DNC. Um, I mean, he's he's holding fundraisers in Washington with Nancy Pelosi. He goes on television saying how he's going to make Trump accountable. Good luck with that. His wife can't make him accountable. His people can't make him. Nobody's going to make Trump accountable. So he's just full of crap. You run for office, you expect to to get hit. Some of it's a little over the top, um, but I'll put up a positive vision for this community up against standard negative partisan hits any day. Hey, Jen. Jen! How are you? Thank you so much for everything you're doing. I couldn't be prouder to be doing this for you. I really appreciate it. Oh, our Thanks pleasure. so much. It's great. In the wake of Trump being elected, a lot of women were feeling powerless. I've never been quiet, and I had been too quiet since moving here. Pave It Blue started in early March of this year to give women in Metro Atlanta an opportunity to get involved and help flip the 6th District. Hey, hi. Hey. You know about the early voting that's coming up? I do, I do. I haven't voted yet, but I will soon. Good, And good. Uh, all, I'm, all on board with John Ossoff. Uh, Yay, that's awesome. We went from literally two people, Jen and I, uh, to four people, Jen and Sarah, my mom and I, mm -hmm. and uh, to a thousand in the blink of an eye. Um, we have a queue that we can't keep up with, uh, with you know about 150 women currently sitting in there waiting to join in, um, with some misdirected dudes in there too uh, <laughs> that we keep having to ignore. So these are the big hashtags that we have trending right now for Pave It Blue. Uh, flip the six, GOTMFV, and uh, hold my purse since this is a woman-led movement. And what does that middle one stand for? Uh, that is get out the motherfucking vote. Lots of groups are at risk now, and it's all of our responsibility to get involved. What do you sense is the feeling in the district? Well, the atmosphere here is electric right now. I can feel it. I can feel it. I almost can touch it. This thing has taken on a little bit of life of its own, uh, and people are watching across the country. I had no idea that it was going to become quite this much of a quite this much of a thing. Yeah. Um, there's some pressure. I want to uh, make folks proud. We welcome you to the Atlanta Press Club Louder Milk Young Debate Series. And the winner of this nonpartisan race will fill the seat vacated by Tom Price, who was appointed as Secretary of Health and Human Services. Karen Handel, you may ask a question to one of your opponents. Thank you. My question is for John. You are being bankrolled to the tune of four million dollars from outside of the state interests, Nancy Pelosi, Daily Cause, Act Blue, George Soros. So my question is, how can the people of the 6th District really trust that you will represent their views when the liberal left of Pelosi's views are so radically different from the district? One of the things I'm proud of about my campaign is that uh, we've raised money in small dollar contributions, which means that folks running for office are accountable to a broad range of people who dig deep for small amounts of money to support candidates that they choose. I'm proud that I have built uh, a diverse coalition that spans the political spectrum here in Georgia, uh, rather than more predictable partisan politics. If I win, it will demonstrate that the passion of folks here in Georgia is stronger and more powerful than fear and division. I'm an ordinary person, you know? I, I just had the passion. You get on Facebook, you start a group. I mean, this guy just turned 30 years old with no resume of accomplishments or achievements and is just throwing this whole dog and pony show together and trying to trick voters. This is a conservative district, right? I mean, you can do the math. It's just, it's just not in the cards.